It isn't easy to set boundaries with toxic people, but it's something we can all learn to do, and when we do, it's empowering. Boundaries are a way to take care of ourselves. When we set boundaries, we're less angry and resentful because our needs are getting met. Boundaries make our expectations clear, so others know what to expect from us and how we want to be treated. Boundaries are the foundation of happy, healthy relationships. Ideally, people will respect our boundaries when we communicate them clearly. But we all know that some people will do everything they can to resist our efforts to set boundaries. They will argue, blame, ignore, manipulate, threaten or physically hurt us. And while we can't prevent people from acting like this, we can learn to set clear boundaries and take care of ourselves. Imagine waking up every day with a sense of dread. Your heart races as you check your phone, anticipating yet another hurtful message. You mentally prepare yourself before encountering a certain person, knowing that their words or actions will drain your energy. Does this sound familiar? If it does, you are not alone. Many people experience this daily, often without realizing they are dealing with a toxic person. In this chapter, we will dive into the concept of toxic behavior, helping you understand what it is, how to identify it, and the profound impact it can have on your life. Recognizing toxicity is the first step towards reclaiming your peace and well-being. Defining toxic behavior. Toxic behavior is a pattern of actions that consistently harm others emotionally, mentally, or even physically. Unlike an occasional outburst or a bad day, toxic behavior is persistent and destructive. It's characterized by a consistent disregard for others' feelings and boundaries. Toxic people can make you feel anxious, insecure and exhausted, often manipulating situations to serve their own needs at the expense of yours. Common Characteristics of Toxic People Understanding the traits of toxic people is crucial for identifying and dealing with them. They often manipulate others to get what they want, using guilt, fear or charm to control situations and people. They tend to have a pessimistic outlook and often bring others down with their constant criticism and complaints. Toxic people are frequently narcissistic, believing the world revolves around them, showing little empathy for others' needs and feelings. They rarely take responsibility for their actions, instead blaming others for their mistakes and shortcomings. Interacting with them leaves you feeling drained and stressed as they suck the joy out of situations and relationships. Their behavior can be unpredictable, charming one moment and cruel the next, keeping you constantly on edge. Psychological Impact The effects of toxic relationships extend far beyond immediate stress and discomfort. Over time, being around toxic people can lead to significant psychological issues. Constant exposure to toxic behavior can make you anxious, always waiting for the next negative interaction. The persistent negativity and criticism can erode your self-esteem, leading to feelings of worthlessness and depression. Your body stays in a state of heightened stress, which can affect your physical health, causing issues like headaches, insomnia and weakened immunity. Repeated manipulations and betrayals can make it hard to trust others, affecting your ability to form healthy relationships. Identifying toxic traits. Recognizing toxic behavior in others can be challenging, especially if you have been subjected to it for a long time. To help identify toxic traits, pay attention to consistent patterns of behavior. Are they regularly negative, manipulative or self-centered? Trust your gut if you frequently feel anxious, drained or unhappy after interacting with someone, it's a sign they may be toxic. Assess how this person's behavior impacts your life. Are you changing your behavior to avoid conflict? Are you less happy or more stressed around them? Talking to trusted friends or a therapist about your experiences can provide an outside perspective, helping you see patterns you might have missed. To bring these concepts to life, let's look at some real-life scenarios. Jane loved her job, but her boss, Mike, was a nightmare. Mike constantly criticized her work, took credit for her ideas, and belittled her in meetings. Jane began to dread going to work and started experiencing severe anxiety. Recognizing Mike's toxic behavior was the first step in regaining her confidence. She documented his actions, sought support from HR, and eventually moved to a different department where her talents were appreciated. Tom had been friends with Sam since college. However, he started noticing that Sam's jokes often hurt him and that Sam manipulated him into doing things he didn't want to do. 
Tom felt exhausted after their interactions. Realizing that Sam's behavior was toxic, Tom began setting boundaries, limiting their interactions, and eventually distancing himself from the friendship. He felt a significant improvement in his emotional well-being. Anna's sister, Lisa, always had something negative to say. Whether it was about Anna's career choices, relationships, or even her hobbies, Lisa found a way to criticize and belittle her. Anna often felt demoralized and doubted herself. Understanding that Lisa's behavior was toxic, Anna learned to assertively defend her choices and reduced the amount of time she spent with Lisa. This helped Anna regain her confidence and focus on her own happiness. Moving forward, recognizing toxic behavior is empowering. It's the first step towards setting boundaries and reclaiming control over your life. As we move through this book, we will delve deeper into strategies for effectively setting and maintaining boundaries with toxic people. By understanding the dynamics of toxic behavior, you are better equipped to protect your mental and emotional health, fostering healthier, more supportive relationships. Remember, you deserve to be treated with respect and kindness. Identifying and addressing toxic behavior is not about changing others, but about empowering yourself to create a life filled with positivity and mutual respect. The journey may be challenging, but the reward a life free from toxicity is worth it. Let's take this first step together. Chapter 2. The Importance of Boundaries Picture yourself as a house without any walls or fences. Strangers can walk in any time, take whatever they want, and leave a mess behind. This chaotic situation is similar to living without boundaries. Without clear boundaries, people can trample over your needs and feelings, leaving you feeling overwhelmed, taken advantage of, and resentful. Boundaries are essential for protecting your personal space, emotional health, and overall well-being. In this chapter, we will explore what boundaries are, why they matter, and how they can transform your relationships and life. What are boundaries? Boundaries are the limits and rules we set for ourselves within relationships. They define what we are comfortable with and how we would like to be treated by others. Boundaries can be physical, emotional, mental, or even digital, encompassing every aspect of our lives. Physical boundaries pertain to personal space and touch, while emotional boundaries protect our feelings and ensure we are not emotionally manipulated or abused. Mental boundaries help us maintain our thoughts, beliefs, and opinions without being unduly influenced or dismissed by others. Digital boundaries, increasingly important in our online lives, dictate how we engage with technology and social media, protecting our time and privacy. Why boundaries matter? Boundaries are crucial because they empower us to take control of our lives. They allow us to protect our self-esteem and personal values, ensuring that our interactions with others are respectful and supportive. Without boundaries, we can easily fall into patterns of codependency, where we prioritize others' needs over our own, leading to burnout and dissatisfaction. Healthy boundaries are the foundation of any strong relationship. They promote mutual respect, understanding, and trust. By setting boundaries, we communicate our needs and expectations clearly, reducing the likelihood of misunderstandings and conflicts. Boundaries also play a significant role in our mental health. They help us manage stress by creating a clear distinction between our responsibilities and those of others. This distinction allows us to focus on what we can control and let go of what we cannot. Boundaries enable us to say no to demands that exceed our capacity, preserving our energy for what truly matters. Real life examples. Consider Sarah, who always felt exhausted and resentful because she couldn't say no to her friend's constant demands. She feared that setting boundaries would make her seem selfish or unkind. However, after learning about boundaries, Sarah realized that saying no when necessary was an act of self-care, not selfishness. She started to set limits on her time and energy, explaining to her friends that she needed to prioritize her well-being. Surprisingly, her friends respected her boundaries, and her relationships improved as she became more relaxed and present. John, on the other hand, struggled with his boss's unrealistic expectations at work. He often took on extra tasks, sacrificing his personal time and health. Recognizing the need for boundaries, John decided to have a candid conversation with his boss. He expressed his concerns and set clear limits on his workload. 
His boss, although initially surprised, appreciated John's honesty and adjusted his expectations. As a result, John felt more balanced and productive. The role of boundaries in maintaining mental health. Boundaries are not just about managing relationships with others, they are also vital for maintaining a healthy relationship with ourselves. When we set boundaries, we protect our mental health by ensuring that we do not overextend ourselves or allow others to infringe on our personal space. Boundaries help us maintain a sense of identity and autonomy, preventing us from being engulfed by others' needs and expectations. Setting boundaries involves recognizing our limits and being honest with ourselves about what we can handle. This self-awareness is crucial for preventing burnout and maintaining a healthy balance between our personal and professional lives. By setting boundaries, we create a safe space for ourselves where we can recharge and reflect, free from external pressures and demands. Boundaries and self-esteem. Healthy boundaries are directly linked to self-esteem. When we set boundaries, we communicate to ourselves and others that we value our needs and feelings. This act of self-respect boosts our confidence and reinforces our sense of self-worth. Conversely, when we fail to set boundaries, we may feel undervalued and disrespected, leading to a decrease in self-esteem. Consider Maria, who always put others' needs before her own. She felt unappreciated and taken for granted, leading to low self-esteem. By learning to set boundaries, Maria began to prioritize her needs and communicate them clearly to others. This shift in behavior helped her feel more valued and respected, significantly improving her self-esteem. Boundaries and personal growth. Setting and maintaining boundaries is a powerful tool for personal growth. It challenges us to reflect on our values, needs and limits, fostering greater self-awareness and self-compassion. As we practice setting boundaries, we develop stronger communication skills and emotional resilience, enhancing our ability to navigate complex relationships and situations. Boundaries also encourage us to take responsibility for our actions and choices. By setting limits, we acknowledge our role in maintaining our well-being and the quality of our relationships. This sense of responsibility empowers us to make conscious decisions that align with our values and long-term goals overcoming the fear of setting boundaries. Many people hesitate to set boundaries due to fear of rejection, conflict, or being perceived as selfish. However, setting boundaries is an act of self-care and respect, not selfishness. It is essential to understand that healthy relationships are built on mutual respect and understanding. If someone reacts negatively to your boundaries, it may indicate their lack of respect for your needs rather than a flaw in your boundary setting. To overcome the fear of setting boundaries, start small. Practice setting boundaries in low-stakes situations, gradually building your confidence and assertiveness. Remember that it is okay to make mistakes and adjust your boundaries as needed. Boundaries are not rigid rules but flexible guidelines that evolve with your needs and circumstances. Moving forward. As we move forward in this book, we will explore practical strategies for setting and maintaining boundaries in various aspects of life. By understanding the importance of boundaries and learning to implement them effectively, you can create healthier, more fulfilling relationships and a balanced, empowered life. Remember, boundaries are not barriers but bridges to better self-care, respect and mutual understanding. Embrace the power of boundaries and take the first step towards a more balanced and fulfilling life. Chapter 3. Self-Awareness and Self-Evaluation Have you ever found yourself agreeing to something that you didn't really want to do, only to feel frustrated and resentful later? Or maybe you've noticed that certain people in your life consistently drain your energy, but you're not sure why. These experiences often stem from a lack of self-awareness and unclear boundaries. Understanding your own needs, limits and triggers is essential for setting effective boundaries. In this chapter, we will explore the journey of self-awareness and self-evaluation, helping you identify what truly matters to you and how to protect it. Self-assessment, understanding your limits and triggers. Self-awareness begins with self-assessment. It involves taking a close, honest look at your feelings, behaviors and patterns. Start by reflecting on recent interactions that left you feeling upset or uncomfortable. What exactly bothered you? Was it the way someone spoke to you, the amount of time spent on a task, or feeling unappreciated? 
Identifying these triggers is crucial because they signal where your boundaries need to be strengthened. Consider journaling your thoughts and emotions regularly. Writing down your experiences helps you notice patterns and gain clarity about what affects you negatively. Over time, you will start to see common themes in your interactions and understand your emotional responses better. This practice of self-assessment is the foundation of self-awareness. Identifying personal values. Your personal values are the principles and standards that matter most to you. They guide your decisions, shape your behavior, and influence your interactions. To set meaningful boundaries, it's essential to identify and understand your core values. Ask yourself what you prioritize in life trust, respect, honesty, or perhaps freedom and creativity. These values reflect who you are and what you stand for. To pinpoint your values, think about moments in your life when you felt truly satisfied and fulfilled. What were you doing and why did it matter to you? Conversely, consider times when you felt deeply upset or compromised. What value was being threatened or violated? By recognizing these values, you can create boundaries that protect and honor them. Emotional Intelligence Enhancing Self-Awareness and Emotional Regulation Emotional Intelligence I is the ability to recognize, understand and manage your own emotions as well as to empathize with the emotions of others. High I is linked to better relationships, improved mental health and greater success in both personal and professional life. Enhancing your emotional intelligence is a key part of developing self-awareness and setting effective boundaries. To boost your eye, practice mindfulness and emotional regulation techniques. Mindfulness involves being present in the moment and fully experiencing your emotions without judgment. It helps you become more aware of your feelings and reactions in real time, allowing you to respond thoughtfully rather than impulsively. Techniques such as deep breathing, meditation and progressive muscle relaxation can help you stay calm and centered even in stressful situations. Communicating your needs clearly. Once you have a clear understanding of your limits, values and emotional triggers, the next step is to communicate your needs effectively. Clear communication is essential for setting and maintaining boundaries. It involves expressing your needs, expectations and limits in a direct, respectful manner. Practice assertive communication, which is neither passive nor aggressive, but balanced and respectful. Use I statements to express your feelings and needs without blaming or criticizing others. For example, say, I feel overwhelmed when I'm asked to take on extra tasks at the last minute. I need more notice to manage my workload effectively, instead of, you never plan ahead and always dump work on me at the last minute. real life examples. Let's look at how self-awareness and clear communication transformed two individuals' lives. Emily always felt stressed and overworked because she couldn't say no to her colleagues' requests for help. After reflecting on her feelings and recognizing that she valued her personal time and work-life balance, Emily decided to set boundaries at work. She began by clearly communicating her availability and explaining that while she was happy to help, she needed to prioritize her own tasks first. This change not only reduced her stress, but also improved her productivity and job satisfaction. David struggled with his family's constant demands and criticism. He realized that his core value was respect, and he felt disrespected when his family ignored his boundaries. By acknowledging his feelings and communicating his need for respect, David had an honest conversation with his family. He explained how their behavior affected him and set clear limits on what he was willing to tolerate. This conversation helped his family understand his perspective and improved their relationship dynamics. Building Emotional Resilience Emotional resilience is the ability to adapt to stressful situations and bounce back from adversity. It is a crucial skill for maintaining boundaries in the face of resistance or pushback from others. Building emotional resilience involves developing coping strategies, fostering a positive mindset, and practicing self-compassion. Develop coping strategies such as seeking support from friends, engaging in physical activity, or pursuing hobbies that bring you joy and relaxation.
A positive mindset involves focusing on what you can control, letting go of what you cannot, and viewing challenges as opportunities for growth. Practicing self-compassion means being kind to yourself, especially when you make mistakes or face setbacks. It involves treating yourself with the same understanding and patience you would offer a good friend. Continuous self-improvement. Embrace the journey of self-discovery and personal growth. Remember that setting boundaries is not a one-time event, but a lifelong practice. By staying attuned to your needs and values, you can navigate life's challenges with greater confidence, clarity and resilience. Moving forward, as we continue our exploration of boundaries in this book, keep in mind the importance of self-awareness and self-evaluation. These foundational skills will empower you to set and maintain boundaries that honor your needs and protect your well-being. In the next chapters, we will delve into practical strategies for communicating your boundaries, dealing with resistance and reinforcing them over time. Together, we will build a toolkit to help you create a balanced, fulfilling life grounded in respect and mutual understanding. Chapter 4. Communicating your boundaries effectively. Imagine being at a crowded party where everyone is speaking different languages. You're trying to explain something important, but no one understands you. Frustrating, right? This is what it can feel like when you try to set boundaries without clear communication. You know what you need, but if you can't convey it effectively, others might not understand, leading to frustration and conflict. Clear communication is the bridge between understanding your boundaries and having them respected by others. In this chapter, we will explore how to communicate your boundaries assertively and respectfully, ensuring your needs are met and your relationships thrive. The importance of clear communication. Effective communication is the cornerstone of setting and maintaining boundaries. Without it, even the best intentions can be misunderstood, leading to resentment and conflict. Clear communication involves expressing your needs, expectations and limits in a straightforward, respectful manner. It's about being honest with yourself and others about what you can and cannot accept. To communicate your boundaries effectively, start by understanding your own needs and feelings. Self-awareness, as discussed in the previous chapter, is crucial. Once you are clear about your boundaries, you need to articulate them in a way that others can understand and respect. This means being direct yet compassionate, firm yet flexible. Assertive communication, the key to boundaries. Assertive communication is about expressing yourself openly and honestly while respecting others. It's a balanced approach that avoids the extremes of passive or aggressive communication. When you communicate assertively, you stand up for your rights without infringing on the rights of others. Using I statements is a powerful tool in assertive communication. These statements focus on your feelings and needs rather than blaming or criticizing the other person. For example, instead of saying, you never listen to me, say, I feel unheard when our conversations are interrupted. Can we find a time to talk without distractions? This approach minimizes defensiveness and fosters a more collaborative atmosphere. Practical steps for communicating boundaries. When communicating your boundaries, be clear and specific about what you need and why it matters to you. Vague statements can lead to misunderstandings, so it's important to be precise. For instance, instead of saying, I need more space, specify, I need at least an hour of alone time after work to decompress. Timing and context are also crucial. Choose a moment when both you and the other person are calm and open to discussion. Trying to set boundaries during a heated argument is likely to backfire. Find a private, comfortable setting where you can speak without distractions or interruptions. It's also helpful to anticipate potential reactions and prepare for them. Not everyone will respond positively to your boundaries, especially if they are used to you being more accommodating. Be ready to explain your reasons calmly and firmly, and stand your ground if necessary. However, also be open to dialogue and willing to negotiate if appropriate. Handling resistance. Resistance to boundaries is common, especially from people who are used to a different dynamic. When faced with resistance, stay calm and reaffirm your needs. 
It's important to remain consistent in your communication and not give in to pressure or guilt tripping. For example, if a friend insists on seeing you every weekend but you need time to yourself, calmly restate your boundary. I value our friendship but I also need time for myself on weekends. Let's plan something for next month. Repeating your boundary in a firm but friendly manner reinforces your position and helps the other person understand its importance. Real life examples. Consider the case of Rachel, who felt overwhelmed by her friend Mark's constant need for support. Every time Mark had a problem, he would call Rachel at all hours, expecting her to drop everything and listen. Rachel realized that this dynamic was draining her and decided to set a boundary. She explained to Mark that while she cared about him and wanted to help, she couldn't be available 247. Instead, they agreed on specific times to talk, allowing Rachel to support her friend without sacrificing her own well-being. In another scenario, James was tired of his colleague Susan repeatedly interrupting him during meetings. This not only disrupted his train of thought, but also made him feel disrespected. James decided to address the issue directly. He spoke to Susan privately and said, I appreciate your enthusiasm during meetings, but I feel interrupted when I'm speaking. Can we agree to wait until someone finishes before we comment? Susan understood and started waiting for her turn, improving the flow of their meetings. Balancing firmness with flexibility. While it's important to be firm about your boundaries, flexibility can sometimes be necessary, especially in relationships where compromise is key. Flexibility doesn't mean compromising your core needs, but it involves being open to dialogue and willing to adjust the specifics if it benefits both parties. For instance, if you've set a boundary about not working after hours, but an urgent project requires extra time occasionally, you might agree to this conditionally. You could say, I usually don't work after hours to maintain my work-life balance, but I can help with this urgent project if we can avoid making it a regular expectation. This approach shows that you are willing to be considerate and collaborative without compromising your overall boundary. Building confidence in your communication. Confidence is crucial when setting boundaries. If you don't believe in your right to set boundaries, it will be hard to communicate them effectively. Practice makes perfect, so start small. Set minor boundaries in low-stakes situations to build your confidence. Over time, as you see the positive impact on your well-being, you'll find it easier to set and maintain boundaries in more challenging situations. Role-playing with a trusted friend or therapist can also help. Practice different scenarios and receive feedback on your communication style. This exercise can boost your confidence and prepare you for real-life interactions. Moving forward. Communicating your boundaries effectively is an ongoing practice. It requires self-awareness, assertiveness and resilience. By mastering these skills, you can create healthier, more respectful relationships and protect your emotional and mental well-being. As we continue in this book, we will explore strategies for reinforcing your boundaries over time and dealing with people who consistently challenge them. Remember, you have the right to protect your personal space and well-being. Clear communication is your most powerful tool in this journey toward a balanced, fulfilling life. Chapter 6. Dealing with Pushback and Resistance Imagine setting a firm rule in your household, like no shoes inside the house. Initially, everyone agrees, but soon enough, you start finding shoes scattered all over. You gently remind your family of the rule, but resistance builds. Some members grumble, others outright defy, and you feel your resolve weakening. This scenario is common when setting boundaries in any context. Pushback and resistance are natural reactions from people who are not used to having boundaries imposed on them. How you handle this resistance is crucial for maintaining your boundaries and ensuring they are respected. In this chapter, we will explore strategies for dealing with pushback and resistance effectively. Understanding the nature of resistance. Resistance often arises from a change in dynamics. When you set a new boundary, it alters the existing relationship patterns, which can be uncomfortable for others. People resist boundaries for various reasons. Fear of change, loss of control, or misunderstanding your intentions. Recognizing that resistance is a natural response can help you approach it with empathy and patience. For example, a friend who is used to you always being available might feel rejected or hurt when you start setting limits on your time. 
Understanding their perspective doesn't mean compromising your boundary, but it helps in addressing their concerns compassionately. Stay firm but empathetic. When you face resistance, it's essential to stay firm yet empathetic. Clearly reiterate your boundary while showing understanding for the other person's feelings. For instance, if a colleague is upset because you've set a boundary about not taking work calls after hours, you might say, I understand that it's frustrating when you can't reach me immediately. However, I need to disconnect after work to recharge and be more effective during working hours. Let's find a way to manage urgent issues during office hours. By acknowledging their feelings and explaining your rationale, you help others see the necessity of your boundary without feeling dismissed. Practice active listening. Active listening can diffuse tension and foster understanding. When someone resists your boundary, let them express their concerns fully before you respond. Show that you are listening by maintaining eye contact, nodding and paraphrasing their points. For example, you could say, I hear that you feel left out when I don't join every social gathering. It's important for me to spend some evenings at home to unwind. Maybe we can find a balance that works for both of us. Active listening demonstrates respect for their viewpoint and can make them more receptive to your boundaries. Offer alternatives. When appropriate, offering alternatives can ease the transition and show that you are willing to compromise without compromising your core needs. For example, if you've set a boundary about not working late, but your team needs your input, you could offer to have a quick morning meeting instead. This shows flexibility and a willingness to collaborate, which can reduce resistance. Consider the case of Jane, who set a boundary with her friend Lisa about not discussing her relationship issues during work hours. Lisa initially resisted, feeling abandoned during her tough times. Jane offered to meet Lisa for coffee on weekends specifically to talk and support her. This alternative helped maintain their friendship while respecting Jane's need to focus on work during business hours. Use positive reinforcement. Positive reinforcement can be an effective way to encourage respect for your boundaries. When someone respects your boundary, acknowledge and appreciate it. Positive feedback reinforces the desired behavior and helps build a pattern of respect. For instance, if your partner respects your need for alone time, express your gratitude. Thank you for giving me some space tonight. I really appreciate your understanding and it makes me feel valued. This reinforcement not only strengthens your boundary, but also enhances your relationship by fostering mutual respect. Handling persistent boundary violators. Despite your best efforts, some individuals might persistently violate your boundaries. In such cases, it's important to address the issue directly and assertively. Reiterate your boundary and the consequences of not respecting it. For example, if a friend repeatedly shows up unannounced despite your requests, you might need to say, I've asked you several times to call before you visit. If this continues, I'll have to limit our visits to scheduled times only. Setting and enforcing consequences is crucial for maintaining your boundaries. It signals that you are serious about your needs and will take necessary steps to protect them. Seek support and backup. Dealing with resistance can be draining and having a support system can make a significant difference. Talk to trusted friends, family members or a therapist about your experiences. They can provide emotional support, advice and encouragement. In some cases, involving a neutral third party, such as a mediator or HR representative, can help resolve conflicts in a more formal setting. This is particularly useful in professional environments where boundary violations can impact your work and mental health, strengthening your resolve. Maintaining boundaries in the face of resistance requires inner strength and conviction. Regularly remind yourself why you set the boundary in the first place and the benefits it brings to your well-being. Visualization techniques can help reinforce your commitment. Imagine a scenario where your boundary is respected and how that positively impacts your life. This mental rehearsal strengthens your resolve and prepares you for real-life interactions. Practicing self-care is also vital. Engage in activities that rejuvenate you and build your resilience. Whether it's exercise, meditation, hobbies, or spending time with loved ones, taking care of yourself enhances your ability to maintain your boundaries. Real-life examples. Consider Robert, who set a boundary with his boss about not answering work emails on weekends. 
Initially, his boss continued to send emails, expecting immediate responses. Robert addressed the issue by reiterating his boundary and explaining its importance for his work-life balance. He suggested discussing any urgent matters before the weekend or on Monday mornings. Over time, his boss adjusted and Robert was able to protect his personal time. Similarly, Anna faced resistance from her siblings when she set a boundary about not lending money. They had been relying on her financial support for years. Anna explained her reasons and offered to help them find financial counseling instead. While it took time and repeated conversations, her siblings eventually respected her boundary and their relationship improved. Moving forward, dealing with pushback and resistance is an inevitable part of setting boundaries. By staying firm, empathetic and consistent, you can navigate these challenges effectively. Remember, setting boundaries is a journey, not a one-time event. Each step you take to reinforce your boundaries strengthens your resolve and improves your relationships. In the next chapters, we will explore specific contexts where boundary setting is crucial, such as in the workplace, with family, and in romantic relationships. We will provide tailored strategies for each scenario, helping you apply the principles of boundary setting to various aspects of your life. With practice and perseverance, you can create a balanced, fulfilling life where your needs and values are respected. Chapter 7. Boundaries in the Workplace Picture this. You're at your desk, trying to finish a report due by the end of the day. Suddenly, a colleague drops by with a quick question that turns into a half-hour chat. Later, your boss asks you to stay late to work on a last-minute project, and then an email pings, demanding your immediate attention. You look at the clock, it's 8 p.m., and you haven't even started the report. Sound familiar? This kind of workplace chaos happens when boundaries are unclear or not respected. Establishing boundaries at work is essential for maintaining productivity, job satisfaction, and overall well-being. In this chapter, we will explore how to set and enforce boundaries in the workplace, ensuring a balanced and healthy professional life. The importance of workplace boundaries. Workplace boundaries are essential for maintaining a healthy work-life balance, reducing stress and preventing burnout. Without clear boundaries, work can seep into every aspect of your life, leading to physical and emotional exhaustion. Effective boundaries help you manage your time, protect your personal life, and enhance your professional performance. Consider the case of Emma, a project manager who used to take work calls and respond to emails late into the night. She realized that this was affecting her sleep, her relationships, and her overall health. By setting clear boundaries about her availability, Emma was able to reclaim her personal time and improve her well-being without compromising her professional responsibilities. Identifying your workplace boundaries The first step in setting workplace boundaries is identifying what you need to function effectively and stay healthy. Reflect on the aspects of your job that cause the most stress or disrupt your work-life balance. These could be things like excessive overtime, constant interruptions, or unclear job expectations. Once you've identified your stress points, determine what boundaries you need to address them. For example, if constant interruptions hinder your productivity, you might set a boundary about not being disturbed during certain hours. If overtime is an issue, you might set a clear end time for your workday. Communicating your boundaries. Communicating your boundaries clearly and assertively is crucial. Start by discussing your needs with your supervisor. Explain how specific boundaries will help you be more productive and effective. For example, you might say, I've noticed that I'm most productive when I can focus without interruptions. Can we establish a policy where I have two hours of uninterrupted time each morning? When discussing boundaries with colleagues, be respectful and clear. For instance, you could say, I'm working on a tight deadline right now. Can we schedule a time to discuss your question later this afternoon? By being direct and polite, you convey your needs without alienating others. Setting boundaries with your boss. Setting boundaries with your boss can be challenging, but is essential for a sustainable work-life balance. Begin by understanding your boss's expectations and priorities. Align your boundaries with these priorities to demonstrate that respecting your boundaries will benefit your work performance. For example, if your boss expects quick responses to emails, but you need to disconnect after hours, you might propose a solution like this. 
I found that disconnecting after 6 p.m. helps me recharge and be more productive the next day. I'll make sure to address any urgent emails first thing in the morning. This approach shows that you are committed to meeting your boss's needs while also taking care of your well-being. Handling boundary violations. Despite clear communication, there will be times when your boundaries are tested or violated. How you handle these situations is crucial for reinforcing your boundaries. Address violations promptly and assertively. For instance, if a colleague interrupts you during your focus time, remind them of your boundary. I'm in my focused work period right now. Can we discuss this after 11 a.m.? If your boss insists on last-minute overtime, reiterate your boundaries and offer alternative solutions. I understand the urgency, but I need to stick to my set work hours for personal reasons. Could we delegate some tasks or prioritize the most critical parts for now? Balancing flexibility and firmness. While it's important to be firm about your boundaries, some flexibility can be necessary, especially in dynamic work environments. Flexibility doesn't mean compromising your well-being but finding a balance that respects both your needs and the demands of your job. For example, if an occasional late night is unavoidable due to a critical project, agree to it with the understanding that it's an exception, not the norm. Communicate clearly that you expect such occurrences to be rare and that you need advance notice whenever possible. Leveraging technology. Technology can be a valuable ally in enforcing your boundaries. Use tools like calendar blocks to schedule uninterrupted work time. Set your email to do not disturb mode after hours and inform your colleagues of your availability schedule. Tools like project management software can help you track tasks and manage workloads more efficiently, reducing the need for constant communication outside work hours. Consider the case of John, who struggled with constant interruptions and after-hours emails. By using a calendar app to block focus time and an email autoresponder to set expectations about his availability, John was able to create a more structured and manageable workday. This not only improved his productivity, but also reduced his stress levels significantly. Real-life examples. Let's look at Sarah, who worked in a fast-paced advertising firm. She noticed that constant emails and last-minute requests were affecting her productivity and personal time. Sarah decided to set boundaries by designating email-free times during her day and informing her team about her focused work hours. She also communicated with her boss about needing advance notice for overtime requests. Although there was initial resistance, her consistent reinforcement and the improved quality of her work helped her team respect her boundaries over time. Another example is Michael, a software developer who found himself overwhelmed by frequent meetings. He decided to set boundaries by blocking off meeting-free afternoons twice a week to focus on deep work. Michael communicated this plan to his manager and team, explaining how this would enhance his productivity. By sticking to this boundary and demonstrating the positive outcomes, Michael gained his team's support. Seeking support and building alliances. Building alliances with colleagues who respect and understand your boundaries can provide additional support. Share your boundary setting goals with trusted co-workers and encourage them to set their own. This collective approach can create a more respectful and balanced work environment. Seeking support from HR or employee assistance programs can also be beneficial, especially if you face significant pushback. These resources can offer guidance on how to handle boundary violations and advocate for healthier workplace practices. Moving forward, setting and maintaining boundaries in the workplace is an ongoing process that requires clarity, communication and consistency. By identifying your needs, communicating effectively, handling violations assertively, and leveraging support, you can create a work environment that respects your boundaries and enhances your well-being. In the next chapters, we will explore boundary setting in other important areas of life, such as with family and in romantic relationships. Each context presents unique challenges and opportunities, and we will provide tailored strategies to help you navigate these effectively. Remember, healthy boundaries are the foundation of a balanced and fulfilling life, and your efforts to establish them are an investment in your long-term happiness and success. Chapter 8. Setting Boundaries with Family Family dynamics can be both a source of comfort and conflict. Picture this. 
You're at a family gathering and Aunt Martha starts prying into your personal life with a barrage of intrusive questions. Meanwhile, your cousin keeps borrowing money without ever paying it back. Setting boundaries with family members can be challenging, but it's essential for maintaining healthy relationships and preserving your well-being. In this chapter, we'll explore the complexities of setting boundaries with family members, providing strategies to navigate familial dynamics with grace and assertiveness. Understanding Family Dynamics Family dynamics are deeply rooted in history, tradition and emotion. Roles and expectations within families can influence how boundaries are perceived and respected. For example, in some families, there may be a strong emphasis on loyalty and togetherness, making it difficult to assert individual boundaries without feeling guilty or disloyal. It's important to recognize that everyone's family is unique and what works for one family may not work for another. Understanding your family's dynamics and values is the first step in setting boundaries effectively. Identifying boundaries that matter. Begin by identifying which boundaries are most important to you and why. Reflect on past interactions with family members that have caused you stress or discomfort. These experiences can highlight areas where boundaries are needed. For instance, if you feel overwhelmed by constant demands for your time and attention, setting boundaries around personal space and alone time may be crucial. If certain topics of conversation consistently trigger conflict or discomfort, establishing boundaries around those topics can help maintain peace within the family. Communicating boundaries clearly. Communicating boundaries with family members requires sensitivity and clarity. Start by expressing your needs and concerns in a calm and respectful manner. Use I statements to convey your feelings without placing blame or judgment. For example, instead of saying, you always criticize my choices, try saying, I feel hurt when my choices are criticized. I would appreciate it if we could focus on supporting each other. Setting limits on intrusive questions. Intrusive questions are a common challenge in family settings. Relatives may inquire about your personal life, finances or future plans without considering your boundaries. Setting limits on intrusive questions involves establishing what topics are off limits and communicating those boundaries assertively. For instance, if Aunt Martha starts asking prying questions about your relationship status, you could respond with, I prefer to keep my personal life private, let's talk about something else. Setting this boundary firmly but respectfully communicates your need for privacy. Handling financial boundaries. Financial boundaries can be particularly sensitive within families, especially if there are disparities in wealth or financial stability. Relatives may ask for loans or financial assistance without considering the impact on your own financial well-being. Setting boundaries around financial requests involves being honest about your limitations and communicating them clearly. If a family member asks for money, you could say, I'm not in a position to lend money right now, but I'm happy to offer other forms of support. Offering alternatives, such as helping them create a budget or connecting them with resources, shows that you care without compromising your own financial stability. Addressing emotional boundaries. Emotional boundaries are equally important in family relationships. Relatives may cross emotional boundaries by making hurtful comments, disregarding your feelings, or expecting you to prioritize their needs over your own. Setting boundaries around emotional well-being involves asserting your right to autonomy and self-care. For example, if a family member constantly criticizes your choices, you could say, I value your opinion, but I need to make decisions that are best for me. Please respect my autonomy. Enforcing consequences for boundary violations. Consistently enforcing consequences for boundary violations is crucial for maintaining their integrity. When a family member disregards your boundaries, it's important to communicate the impact of their actions and follow through with appropriate consequences. For example, if your cousin continues to borrow money without repayment despite your boundary, you may need to limit or cut off financial assistance altogether. Communicate this consequence clearly and assertively, emphasizing that it's necessary to protect your own financial well-being. Seeking support from other family members. Navigating boundary setting within families can be challenging, especially if certain relatives resist or undermine your efforts. Seeking support from other family members who respect your boundaries can provide validation and encouragement. 
talk to family members who understand your perspective and share your values. They can offer advice, moral support, and even act as allies in enforcing boundaries during family gatherings or interactions, seeking outside help if necessary. In some cases, setting boundaries with family members may require outside assistance, such as therapy or mediation. A qualified therapist can provide guidance on navigating complex family dynamics and developing effective communication strategies. Mediation can be particularly helpful for resolving conflicts or disputes within families. A neutral third party can facilitate discussions, help clarify misunderstandings, and guide family members toward mutually acceptable solutions. Real-life examples Consider the case of Alex, who struggled with setting boundaries with his overbearing mother. She would frequently drop by unannounced and criticize his choices in front of other family members. Alex decided to set boundaries by scheduling regular visits with his mother and asserting his need for privacy and respect. Although there was initial resistance, Alex's consistent enforcement of boundaries led to a more respectful and harmonious relationship with his mother over time. In another example, Maya faced pressure from her parents to pursue a career path she wasn't passionate about. Despite their expectations, Maya asserted her boundary by expressing her desire to pursue her own interests and goals. Although there were disagreements initially, Maya's firmness and determination eventually led her parents to accept and support her decisions. Moving forward, setting boundaries with family members is essential for maintaining healthy relationships and protecting your well-being. By identifying your needs, communicating boundaries clearly, and enforcing consequences for violations, you can foster mutual respect and understanding within your family. In the next chapter, we will explore boundary setting in romantic relationships, providing strategies for establishing healthy boundaries and fostering intimacy and trust. Remember, setting boundaries is an ongoing process that requires patience, assertiveness, and self-awareness. With practice and perseverance, you can cultivate fulfilling relationships that honor your needs and values. Chapter 9. Establishing Healthy Boundaries in Romantic Relationships Love is a beautiful journey, but it can also be fraught with challenges, especially when it comes to boundaries. Picture this. You're in a new relationship and everything feels magical. But gradually, you start noticing little things that make you uncomfortable your partner constantly checking your phone, invading your personal space, or making decisions without consulting you. Setting healthy boundaries in romantic relationships is essential for maintaining mutual respect, trust, and emotional well-being. In this chapter, we'll explore the intricacies of boundary setting in romantic relationships, offering guidance on how to navigate complex dynamics with grace and assertiveness. Understanding the importance of boundaries in relationships. Boundaries serve as the framework for healthy and respectful relationships. They define the limits of acceptable behavior, safeguard individual autonomy, and foster mutual understanding and trust. Without clear boundaries, relationships can become mired in resentment, insecurity, and power struggles. Recognizing the importance of boundaries in relationships is the first step toward creating a strong foundation for love and intimacy. Recognizing your own needs and limits. Before setting boundaries in a romantic relationship, it's crucial to understand your own needs, values, and limits. Reflect on your personal boundaries, what makes you feel comfortable or uncomfortable, what you're willing to compromise on, and what's non-negotiable. For example, you may have boundaries around communication, e.g. needing alone time to recharge, physical intimacy, e.g. preferences for affectionate gestures, or decision-making, e.g. wanting to be consulted on major life choices. Identifying these boundaries allows you to communicate them effectively to your partner. Communicating boundaries effectively. Effective communication is key to establishing and maintaining healthy boundaries in romantic relationships. Start by initiating an open and honest conversation with your partner about your boundaries and why they're important to you. Use I statements to express your feelings and needs without blaming or accusing your partner. For instance, instead of saying, you always invade my privacy, try saying, I feel uncomfortable when my phone is checked without my permission. Can we discuss respecting each other's privacy? Respecting each other's autonomy. Respecting each other's autonomy is essential for fostering mutual trust and understanding in a romantic relationship. 
This means acknowledging and honoring your partner's individuality, preferences and boundaries, even if they differ from your own. Avoid making assumptions or imposing your expectations on your partner. Instead, strive to listen actively, validate their feelings and negotiate mutually agreeable solutions when conflicts arise. Setting boundaries around communication. Communication is the lifeblood of any relationship, but it's essential to establish boundaries around communication to ensure both partners feel heard and respected. This may involve setting aside dedicated time for meaningful conversations, establishing guidelines for conflict resolution, or agreeing on boundaries for digital communication. For example, you may decide to limit texting during work hours to focus on professional responsibilities or establish a rule to refrain from discussing sensitive topics late at night when emotions are heightened. Establishing physical boundaries. Physical boundaries are an integral part of intimacy and should be respected at all times in a romantic relationship. Communicate your comfort level with physical affection, sexual intimacy and personal space to your partner and be receptive to their boundaries as well. For instance, if you're uncomfortable with public displays of affection, express your preference to your partner and discuss alternative ways to express love and affection that feel mutually satisfying. Negotiating shared boundaries in addition to individual boundaries, couples may need to negotiate shared boundaries that reflect their mutual values and goals. These shared boundaries may involve agreements about fidelity, financial decisions, household responsibilities or future plans. Negotiating shared boundaries requires open communication, compromise and a willingness to find common ground. Be prepared to listen to your partner's perspective, express your own needs and concerns, and work together to find solutions that honor both of your boundaries. Enforcing boundaries consistently. Consistently enforcing boundaries is essential for maintaining their integrity and ensuring mutual respect in a romantic relationship. If your boundaries are crossed or violated, communicate your feelings assertively and establish consequences for future boundary violations. For example, if your partner repeatedly disregards your boundary around privacy, calmly explain how their actions impact you and express your expectations for respectful behavior moving forward. Follow through with consequences if necessary to reinforce the importance of your boundaries. Seeking support and professional help. Seeking support from trusted friends, family members, or a therapist can provide valuable guidance and perspective when navigating boundary issues in a romantic relationship. A neutral third party can offer insights, facilitate communication, and help both partners explore underlying issues that may be contributing to boundary conflicts. If boundary issues persist despite your best efforts, consider seeking professional help from a couple's therapist or relationship counselor. These trained professionals can provide specialized support in addressing communication breakdowns, resolving conflicts, and rebuilding trust in the relationship. Chapter 10 nurturing self-compassion and personal boundaries. In the hustle and bustle of daily life, it's easy to lose sight of our own needs and boundaries. We often prioritize the happiness and well-being of others, neglecting our own mental, emotional and physical health in the process. But just as we set boundaries with others, it's equally important to establish boundaries with ourselves and cultivate self-compassion. Imagine a life where you treat yourself with the same kindness, understanding and respect that you extend to others. This chapter delves into the importance of nurturing self-compassion and personal boundaries, offering insights and strategies to prioritize your own well-being amidst life's demands. Understanding Self-Compassion Self-compassion is the practice of treating oneself with kindness, understanding and acceptance, especially in moments of difficulty or suffering. It involves acknowledging our own humanity, our flaws, mistakes and imperfections without harsh self-judgment or criticism. Dr. Kristen Neff, a pioneering researcher in the field of self-compassion, identifies three core components of self-compassion. Self-kindness, common humanity and mindfulness. By embracing these elements, we can cultivate a more compassionate and nurturing relationship with ourselves. Practicing self-kindness. Self-kindness involves offering ourselves the same warmth, care, and support that we would offer to a close friend or loved one. It means responding to our own struggles and setbacks with gentleness and understanding, rather than harsh self-criticism or judgment. 
to practice self-kindness, start by noticing the language you use when talking to yourself. Are you overly critical or harsh? Challenge negative self-talk by replacing it with words of kindness and encouragement. Treat yourself with the same compassion and empathy that you would offer to someone you care about. Embracing common humanity. Common humanity recognizes that suffering and imperfection are universal experiences shared by all human beings. Rather than feeling isolated or ashamed of our struggles, we can find comfort in the knowledge that we are not alone in our challenges. When facing difficulties, remind yourself that everyone experiences setbacks and hardships at some point in their lives. Cultivate a sense of connection and solidarity with others, knowing that we are all navigating the ups and downs of life together. Cultivating Mindfulness Mindfulness involves being present and aware of our thoughts, feelings and sensations without judgment. It allows us to observe our inner experiences with curiosity and acceptance, rather than getting caught up in self-critical or reactive patterns. Practice mindfulness by bringing gentle awareness to your thoughts and emotions, especially during moments of stress or difficulty. Notice any self-critical or judgmental thoughts that arise and gently redirect your attention to the present moment with kindness and compassion. Setting personal boundaries. Personal boundaries are the limits we set for ourselves in terms of what we will and will not tolerate in our lives. They encompass our physical, emotional and mental well-being, protecting us from harm and preserving our autonomy and self-respect. Setting personal boundaries involves identifying our needs, values and limits and communicating them assertively to others. It means saying no when necessary, prioritizing self-care and honoring our own needs and desires. Recognizing boundary crossings. Boundary crossings occur when others disregard or violate our personal boundaries, whether intentionally or unintentionally. These breaches can leave us feeling disrespected, resentful or depleted, undermining our sense of self-worth and autonomy. Become aware of situations where your boundaries are being crossed and pay attention to how it makes you feel. Notice any signs of discomfort or resentment and use them as cues to assert your boundaries more assertively in the future. Asserting personal boundaries. Asserting personal boundaries involves communicating our needs and limits to others in a clear, direct and respectful manner. It means advocating for ourselves, even when it feels uncomfortable or challenging. Practice assertiveness by expressing your boundaries calmly and confidently, using I statements to communicate your needs and feelings. Be firm and consistent in enforcing your boundaries, and don't be afraid to set consequences for boundary violations if necessary. Practicing self-compassionate boundary setting. Combining self-compassion with boundary setting can enhance our ability to prioritize our own well-being while maintaining healthy relationships with others. By treating ourselves with kindness and understanding, we can assert our boundaries from a place of self-respect and self-care rather than fear or resentment. When setting boundaries, check in with yourself regularly to ensure that you're honoring your own needs and values. Offer yourself words of encouragement and support, especially during challenging moments, and remember that prioritizing your well-being is not selfish, it's an act of self-love and self-respect. Balancing compassion for others and for ourselves. Finding the balance between compassion for others and for ourselves is essential for maintaining emotional equilibrium and well-being. While it's important to be caring and empathetic toward others, we must also extend the same level of compassion and understanding to ourselves. Practice self-compassion by acknowledging your own needs and limitations, setting boundaries that honor your well-being, and treating yourself with the same kindness and respect that you show to others. By nurturing a compassionate relationship with ourselves, we can cultivate greater resilience, inner peace and fulfillment in our lives. Real Life Examples Consider the case of Maya, who struggled with setting boundaries at work. She often found herself taking on extra projects and working late hours to please her colleagues and supervisors, neglecting her own well-being in the process. Through practicing self-compassion, Maya learned to prioritize her own needs and set boundaries around her workload and working hours. By treating herself with kindness and understanding, she was able to assert her boundaries confidently and maintain a healthier work-life balance. 
In another example, Alex found himself constantly saying yes to social invitations and requests from friends, even when he felt overwhelmed and exhausted. Through practicing self-compassion, Alex realized that he was neglecting his own needs in order to please others. He began setting boundaries around his social commitments, prioritizing self-care and honoring his own need for rest and relaxation. As a result, he felt more empowered, balanced and at peace in his relationships and in his life. Moving forward, nurturing self-compassion and personal boundaries is a lifelong journey that requires ongoing practice and self-reflection. By cultivating kindness, understanding and respect toward ourselves, we can establish firm yet flexible boundaries that promote our well-being and enrich our relationships with others. As you continue on your journey of self-compassion and boundary setting, remember to 1. Practice self-awareness. Take time to tune into your thoughts, feelings and needs. Notice when your boundaries are being tested or violated and reflect on how you can assert them more effectively. 2. Prioritize self-care. Make self-care a non-negotiable part of your routine. Set aside time for activities that nourish your mind, body and spirit, whether it's meditation, exercise, creative pursuits, or simply resting and rejuvenating. 3. Cultivate assertiveness. Practice asserting your boundaries with confidence and clarity. Use assertive communication techniques to express your needs and limits without aggression or passivity, and don't be afraid to advocate for yourself when necessary. 4. Be consistent. Consistency is key when it comes to boundary setting. Enforce your boundaries consistently and without exception, even when it feels uncomfortable or challenging. This reinforces the message that your needs are valid and deserving of respect. 5. Seek support. Surround yourself with supportive friends, family members or professionals who understand the importance of self-compassion and healthy boundaries. Lean on them for encouragement, advice and validation as you navigate your journey. 6. Practice forgiveness. Be gentle with yourself when you inevitably make mistakes or encounter setbacks along the way. Remember that self-compassion is about embracing your humanity, imperfections and all, and treating yourself with kindness and understanding in moments of difficulty. By integrating these principles into your daily life, you can cultivate a deeper sense of self-compassion, resilience and empowerment. As you honor your own needs and boundaries, you create space for authenticity, fulfillment and meaningful connection in all areas of your life. In the final chapter, we'll reflect on the transformative power of self-compassion and boundary setting and explore how these practices can pave the way for a more balanced, joyful and fulfilling life.